So now that we know how testing works in a modern software development environment, we're going to take a look at the tool called RSpec that we're going to be using for most of our testing in this course. And in introducing it, I'm going to introduce an acronym to help you remember some of the principles that go along with writing tests. So unit tests should be FIRST. You can remember by the acronym FIRST these desirable properties when you're writing unit tests. They should be fast. They should be independent. They should be repeatable. They should be self-checking. And they should be timely. So briefly, what does each one of these mean, and why do we care about it? Fast just means that the tests don't take very long to run. As we're going to see, a typical application, even a simple one, is going to have hundreds or thousands of test cases. So if the test took a long time to run, it would disrupt your flow as you're moving between running tests, writing tests, and writing the code. Independent means that you can run any subset of the tests and expect them to work in isolation. In other words, there's no dependencies on the order in which different tests run. And again, this is because in a large application, even when the tests are running fast, it may be too costly to run the entire test suite every time you make a change. Having independent tests means that you can only run that subset of tests that might be affected by your most recent code changes. Repeatable means that the test will do the same thing every time you run them. Now, this might seem obvious, but when we do the self-check question for this lecture, we'll look at some scenarios where it's not so clear if you can make tests repeatable when they're trying to test code that is inherently non-deterministic, such as if you're flipping a coin. Self-checking means that no human beings should have to examine the output of the test in order to figure out whether they passed or not. So the test should have enough information that after it's finished executing, it knows whether the right thing happened. And we care about this for the same reason we care about any type of automation. When we automate our test suites being run and the results being collected, it allows us to have a repeatable task that we can sort of always have running in the background. In fact, that's what we're going to argue for in this lecture segment. So repeatable just means that the same thing happens every time you run them. Self-checking, they know whether they passed or not. And lastly, timely means that the tests are written pretty close in time to the code that's going to be tested. And we've said before that we're going to do test-driven development, or TDD. That means in most cases, we're going to be writing the tests before we write the code. Now, later on in the course, we're going to teach you how to do that. But for the time being, for the first couple of homeworks, we have provided the test cases for you. And we're going to illustrate now how RSpec works to help us run those cases. So RSpec is a domain-specific language for testing. And a domain-specific language, or DSL, means that it's specialized at doing some narrow set of tasks at the expense of generality or at the expense of other tasks. And you've already seen some examples of this. For example, regular expressions are a DSL for expressing patterns that might match different kinds of strings. If you're familiar with database programming, SQL, the structured query language, is a domain-specific language for making database queries. Now, a difference with RSpec is that it's a domain-specific language embedded in Ruby. That is to say that every RSpec program is actually valid Ruby code, and it takes advantage of Ruby features like poetry mode to make it more readable. So what does this look like? Looking at this first set of tests, we're describing a class called dessert, which you're going to be asked to create as part of the next homework. And the first block of tests is about a particular kind of dessert, or a cake. So what we're saying is the subject of our test is a new dessert, which we're specifying to be a cake with 400 calories. And once we've created that new object instance, these very simple tests consist of looking at various attributes and make sure that their values are what we expect based on the constructor. We also have an apple, which should be delicious and should be healthy. And as we get farther into the class, we'll teach you how to interpret these specs in more detail. But for now, note that things like be delicious and be healthy use method missing to actually call methods delicious question mark and healthy question mark in your class. As you read the homework assignment, it'll become clear that you're supposed to write these methods to give uh, information as to whether a dessert is healthy or not. So our spec tests are called specs or examples. Each spec or example tests one behavior. And one way to run the test file is to run the rspec command against the particular file name, like the file that we just saw. And what you'll see is that you get error messages printed out in red for the tests that fail. Tests that pass will be shown in green. And tests that have not yet been implemented, or so-called pending tests, will be shown in yellow. Now, as I said, a large project could have thousands of test cases spread across hundreds of files. And running rspec on each file, or even on the whole suite, might not be very efficient. So instead, we're going to prefer this other technique of using autotest, which is a nice tool that not only runs all of your RSpec tests, but anytime you make a change to the test code or a change to the app code, 
AutoTest will figure out which tests need to be rerun, and it will automatically do that. It's running in the background all the time. So let's take a look at a demonstration of how that might work. So I'm going to skip to the OK. This is uh, basically the contents of the directory that you guys are going to get for homework one. Um, and there's about five or six different files full of tests that we've created for you guys. I've got one of them up here. Uh, it's called fun with strings spec. Uh, as you'll see, there's a convention that when I follow the name of a file name with underscore spec, it means this is specs that go with that class. So, I'm going to go into this directory and I'm going to run auto tests. So if I scroll up through here, you'll see there's a lot of yellow messages, all of which are pending. It says no reason given. They're yellow, but I don't know why they're yellow. Well, the reason is that in the test files that we supply to you guys initially, all of the blocks of tests are marked pending true, which means don't even try to run these tests because the code is not there yet. Now, suppose I delete pending true for one segment of these tests. So you can see there's three different tests here. It should work for simple strings. It should be case insensitive. It should ignore non-word characters. I'm now going to save this file. And without me doing anything, here we go. Ready? Save file. Oh, it woke up. And now it says three failing examples. And indeed, the three examples that I just looked at at lines 5, 9, and 12, it's now trying to run them. And redivider should be a palindrome, but it's not. So, the meat of the homework assignment is to write the code that does this, but what you just saw is I changed something in the test file, AutoTest immediately figured out what I changed, and tried to rerun only those tests. If I had been changing my code file, AutoTest would figure out which tests have used that code file in the past so that it could run the test against my updated code. So just run AutoTest in the background, and as you modify the code in test files, you'll start to see these lines go green one at a time as you backfill the code necessary for the test to pass.